What's up guys? Today we're going to go over how to make a 3x3 door. So this door will work by flipping a lever on the outside, it will open. I did my best to make it as visually appealing as possible and as fast as possible. So it looks like this when you open it. You can go onto the inside of the base and flip another lever and it will close. You can flip the same one and it will open again. And then you can flip the original one and it will close again. Now this door will work on both Java and Bedrock Editions. Bedrock Edition will require a slight modification on one of the repeaters down there, but I'll show you exactly what to do for that if that is what you need. It's also not specifically flush with the wall. If you're in Java Edition specifically and you want a flush 3x3 door, I will link one at the top. But with that, let's jump right in. For the materials that you'll need, you'll need 11 redstone torches, uh, two levers, at least eight redstone repeaters. It's always a good idea to have extras in case you end up moving something. Um, like if you want to modify the build that I did, you might need to add another one or two somewhere. Uh, two slime or honey blocks that can be either slime or honey, doesn't matter. Nine sticky pistons, uh, one piece of glass. Uh, this is just how I built it. Um, again, if you modify something, you may or may not need this. You're going to need at least one piece of obsidian uh, in Java Edition or Bedrock Edition. In Java Edition, you can replace it with furnaces if you want to, but Bedrock Edition, you have to use obsidian. And that is specifically right here. Um, that's not negotiable. It has to be a nonstick block that is opaque. Um, in Java Edition, you can use like a furnace or a dropper or something like that, but in Bedrock, you have to use obsidian. You can optionally use another five nonstick blocks, and that is for kind of around the door. Um, so that it doesn't end up taking your wall with it. Um, so this is so that it can close and it doesn't take this stuff with it. You're also going to need a handful of redstone. I didn't bother counting it, but I would say about a stack or two, probably two stacks to be safe. Um, you also need then just your building blocks. Um, I used the deep slate bricks. I used gold for the door and just grass for the floor. Um, it doesn't matter which blocks you use here, except for some are required to be opaque, which I try my best to explain which ones need to be that. Just to quickly show you the dimensionality required if you build it exactly like I did. So you're going to have your outside base wall, your inside base wall, and you're going to need three blocks in between those two walls. Um, so it's going to be five blocks thick, including both of the walls. On the right side, you're going to have five blocks horizontally out. And this includes, uh, you know, one block out so that you can enclose it um, fully without, you know, needing to add another one in order to enclose it. Um, so the five blocks includes that. You can see that. Um, likewise, on the left side, it's another five blocks, and that includes the uh, one block spillover to be able to enclose it fully. You also are going to have this contraption underground. Um, this will spill over to the left side a little bit. However, it is fully underground so that you can close it like that and not really need to increase the wall length. For the roof, you're going to need to go one, two, and then three blocks for the roof to fully enclose the redstone. And underground, you're going to need three blocks down in order to make this contraption right here. Um, so, you know, like one, uh, which is the ground, and then two, and then three. All right, so to start off, I have built the door itself, which are the gold blocks right here. I also built the wall outlines for the wall on the outside of the base, as well as the wall for the inside of the base. This is just so that I have a guideline of uh, where to put stuff. This is not like the total wall, and it's not going to be long enough. We're going to have to extend the length out a little bit as we build it. You're going to need three blocks in between both of the walls, uh, just so you have enough space to be able to place everything. So the first thing that we can do is place the slime blocks or the honey blocks, it doesn't matter which one you do, uh, on one side. I'm going to do it on the left side, so we have it on the middle, and then we have it on the left uh, middle block right there. And this is just so that we can get the middle block out of the way. The next thing that we can do is place the pistons that we need in order to get all of the blocks out. So before we do any redstone, we'll just place the pistons down and get them in the right spot. So the ones on the top need to be uh, two blocks up so that there's a block in between uh, the gold block and the piston, and it needs to be face down. So we're going to place it like this. So it'll be there. So there's a block in between and it's facing down. Uh, we can get rid of these ones now. We're going to need one on the middle, same idea, where it's facing in and it's one block away. We're going to need to go on this side, and this one's a little bit different, so we're going to have two blocks. And instead of being on the gold block directly, it's going to be on the slime blocks. So two blocks, another two blocks, and then one. Um, these are just temporary blocks I'm placing to be able to place the pistons. And we're going to place the pistons facing into the slime blocks, and there's going to be a two block gap in between there. And then on the bottom, it's the same idea as the top, where we have... Um, I'm just going to carve some out, stuff out here so I have more space to see. Uh, we're going to have one block in between the pistons, and we're going to have the pistons facing up into the gold blocks here. 
Um, and I'm just going to carve this out so that we have the space that we need to place the redstone later. This side as well. Okay. So now we can place the redstone down. Um, luckily, the redstone isn't super complicated, but it can get a little messy uh, to keep and keep, hard to keep track of. So the first thing that we want to do is place uh, opaque blocks. I guess this can be transparent, but uh, opaque probably works better. And we're going to place them up here so that uh, there's a there can be, there needs to be a gap here so that the pistons can grab the gold blocks. And then we place the blocks here uh, so that we can get the redstone into the pistons and that it will work in both Java and Bedrock Edition. Uh, we need to place the repeaters directly facing into the pistons instead of uh, one block above like this. We're going to place three pistons up, or th sorry, three repeaters up here. The middle one's going to be a delay of four, and the two side ones are going to be a delay of two. And then we can place redstone dust across this side right there. Now we need to be able to get this down. So I'm going to pull this down just by making a staircase, and we can get rid of the diagonal blocks there. I'm going to place redstone dust. I'm going to bring it down another one. Now we're going to wire this piston up. So this one will be the same idea where the repeater has to go into directly into it. Uh, so on this like right side here, we're going to place a repeater. It's going to be delay four and then we'll place redstone dust that connects to this redstone dust down here. So you're gonna have something that looks like this from the aerial view. Uh, we're going to have to uh, get this down. So I'm going to make another staircase. Uh, we can again, get rid of the diagonal blocks if you don't want them. Uh, they can be there if you want. There's no reason to have them though. We can go down. Uh, this is always kind of awkward. We can do this, I suppose. Um, just however you, you like the look of it. So down here, we're going to go out and we're going to do the same thing we did at the top where we have three repeaters facing into these pistons. We're going to have a delay of four, a delay of two, and a delay of two. And we're going to let the redstone dust attach to that. Okay, so these two are a little bit more complicated. So what we're going to do is diagonally down. So uh, we're going to place two blocks down right here. So diagonally down from the pistons. Um, I'm going to extend this wall out just so I kind of have a reference of what I'm doing. These need to be opaque blocks. So don't use glass or something like that. Um, you can use dirt if you want to. Uh, just make sure they're opaque. We're going to place two torches on the top here. And then we're going to place another two opaque blocks here and place two more torches on the bottom. Um, so these ones should be off if they're if they are opaque. If these ones are on and these ones are also on, make sure you are using an uh, opaque block and not a transparent one. Down here, we're going to extend the redstone dust out. We're going to place the redstone dust directly into this uh, left one. And then we're going to place a repeater on the right one, and it's going to be a delay of two. If you're in Java Edition, leave it as a delay of two. If you're in Bedrock Edition, make it a delay of four. Um, I believe this is the only difference that I'm going to have between the two versions. Um, Bedrock Edition doesn't work fast enough to have a delay of two, so it'll like it'll inconsistently leave this block in some random spot, but it'll never be able to contract it all the way. So if you're in Bedrock Edition, make a delay of four. If you're in Java, you can make it a delay of two, and that will match the delay of all of the rest of the ones here. I also certified that it does work in Bedrock Edition. Now, there's one more thing that we have to do in order to hook up all of the redstone for the pistons. So we're going to go down off of this block that has the dust, and we're going to go make a staircase and go down, um, get rid of this block so it's not in the way of your door. Now, we have to do it again, but we have to place a non-stick block here. Uh, we can get rid of that one as well. This block can be has to be an opaque block that will not get pushed and pulled by the slime blocks. In Java Edition, our options are Obsidian, which is my favorite one to use. We can also use a dropper, a furnace, or something else. So I could put a furnace right here, and it would work exactly the same way. Um, in Bedrock Edition, you're kind of limited. Really, the only option you have is Obsidian. So I'm sorry about that. Um, I use Obsidian anyways, so it's not really any different from what I do, but it's more annoying to get. If you don't have a diamond pickaxe and don't want to make one, you can always like make a little thing like this and put lava here and then pour water over it in order to get the obsidian there. Uh, but furnaces and droppers and dispensers will not work in Bedrock Edition, so I'm sorry for that. Um, I'm going to use obsidian, but I'm in Java Edition, so I could use a furnace if I wanted to. Okay, so now what we do is we just place redstone dust on top of that. Uh, make sure that there's nothing that's going to stick to the slime blocks. Um, if you had a block here, it will just get pulled by the slime blocks, which would be kind of annoying. Uh, but in this case, it won't close properly. But if it were like here, it would be it'd be fine. It would just look weird. Uh, but I'd recommend just making sure nothing sticks to the slime blocks. which And this one specifically needs to not do that. Okay, so now I want to test it just to make sure I did all the wiring properly. 
So I'm going to go down kind of like into the middle of this like redstone dust wire here and put a redstone torch. And I should see all of the pistons contract. And then I should, or sorry, extend. And then I should be able to see the door open when I get rid of it. Um, this is just a test to make sure I did that right. But of course we need to do the circuitry for the levers now. Um, the reason I'm doing it in the middle is because I don't want to have to add a repeater to make the signal reach to the ends. Um, this one being the end and this one being the end. So I'm kind of doing it in the middle um, of the whole line. All right, so now we need to make something known as an exclusive OR gate or an X OR gate. Um, clearing up my inventory. So this is what we need to do in order to get the levers to behave properly so that we can have one on the inside and the outside and have them work independently of each other. Um, so I'm just going to show you what I typically do, uh, and I'll try to explain how you can move it later or move the levers or something. Um, so first what I did in the demonstration, and I, I had a lever on the ground right here. Um, in the demonstration, I had a lever on the wall, but I'm going to do it also on the ground. Um, this just lets me make it, the walls extremely more compact so that we don't have to extend the walls horizontally out as much. Uh, you are welcome to move the levers wherever you want to, as long as the redstone connects up to the important parts, which I'll explain what those mean. You're also welcome to move the XOR gate itself, which we haven't built yet. So I'll, I'll build it and show you how it works. And then I'll explain kind of like how you might be able to move it around if you need to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go two blocks off of this red, like this little redstone thingy. And I'm going to go down three blocks um, and carve this out. So we have a three block wide, three block deep and a like, it's two blocks away from this thing underground. And then it will kind of be underground. Uh, under here. Okay. So what we do now is I'm going to grab the redstone from the levers. I'm going to do it here. And I'm just going to grab them and I'll hook them up once I get the rest of it working. Whoops. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know if this is exactly where they're going to go, but it might. So the first thing that we need to do is we have, so like from this diagonal block right here, this block that's right here, we should have four blocks wide um, underground. So I'm gonna place opaque blocks in a pattern that's like this immediately up against the wall. Um, they have to be opaque because they need to be able to grab the redstone signal that you're putting into it. We're gonna put a torch on top of this one, on top of this one, and then on the sides of those ones. And we're also gonna put one on the side of the middle one. We're gonna put redstone dust on the top here. And then uh, two blocks away, I'm going to put another opaque block here and another opaque block here. I'm going to put redstone dust here, redstone dust here, and then on top. And then I'm going to carve this out, carve the one out under here. Sorry, it's a little hard to see. Um, and I'll put a block here. Maybe I'll grab a torch just so we can see what's going on. Uh, put here maybe. Okay. Um, we're going to put a redstone torch on the side there, a redstone torch on the side here. And we're going to put a redstone under this block. Um, now, this block right here, I'm going to have to replace with glass in order for it to work properly. Um, so that this thing attaches up and it can travel up um, as needed. So the way this works is it will basically make it where if you have both inputs off. Um, and also, yeah, the inputs. I, I was actually right about where, where these go. The levers need to go and they need to attach to the block that is uh, that has this redstone torch on it. So that if it's powered, it powers the block. Make sure that it faces into it as well. If you do something like this, it won't, I, it just doesn't attach. So like, even though this is on, it's still not powering the redstone torch. But anyways, um, what should happen is like the input th right there should be off when both are off. If I have one on, it should be on. If I turn the other one, the first one off and the other one on, it should also be on. And if I have both levers on, it should be off. And that's how we can get it to work independently. Um, so this should work properly, where if I turn one, it'll close it. If I go turn another one, it will open it. If I do the same one, it'll close it, and so on and so forth. Um, so in this case, I can close up the grass here, and then this is all underground, so you can actually close it up here um, at will. And then you have your walls, and then if you need to, like, if you don't want to look at the redstone, you kind of, like, encapsulate it there. So this lets you make it very compact if you do everything underground like that. Now, if you don't want to have the levers on the ground, so if you want the lever to be like on the wall, um, pretty much all you need to do, um, and I say all you need to do, it is not necessarily a trivial thing to do either. You need to make the lever, whatever the lever is doing, the signal needs to go and attach to this block right here. 
Um, so if you do it on the wall, it might be easier to like come in from this way, for example. Uh, you also need to make sure that, and this is usually the hardest part, you need to make sure that the lever itself doesn't interfere with any of the redstone. So for example, if I were to put it like here, this lever would power this redstone right here and that will break it. Um, in particular, it won't let the door close. So the hardest part is making sure it doesn't interfere with anything inside of it. Um, you can put it wherever else you want. Um, if you want to build it the same way I did, I recommend doing that just because it makes you makes it more compact. You're also welcome to move this whole thing right here. Um, in particular, uh, the only thing that you need to attach is, first of all, the inputs need to go into the blocks here. And likewise, this one needs to go into this block. You also need to attach this middle redstone right here that's in the front of it to the line, the redstone kind of like line um, to the rest of the door. So like this redstone line just like extends from this area all the way up and then it goes over here. Um, you need to attach it somewhere in the middle so that the redstone signal will reach. Uh, if you move this whole thing and you have to like, if this redstone is like way over there, for example, you might need to put a repeater um, into this before it attaches. So like say, let's say you did it um, underground, like over here, for example, uh, you might need to put a repeater here to signal strengthen it before it reaches the rest of it. So just be aware of that. If it doesn't reach, um, if like you're noticing like half of your door closes and half of it doesn't, um, go check that the signal reaches both to here and to here if you move uh, this gate right here. Okay. So that's really all you need to know in order to be able to move it. Um, if you want to build it the same way I did, I just did the levers, um, like the door is right here. And then there's one the immediately to the right of the block on the inside. I put the lever there. I could have just as easily put the lever here as well. And then you just take the redstone and go under it. And then on this one, likewise, I did it just like immediately next to the wall um, like that. So this is all you need to do for the door. Uh, feel free to move things around and also feel free to comment if you have issues or you want to move something and have a question before you like fully commit to it. So now for filling in the blocks, um, you're pretty free to do whatever you want. Um, so we have our floor here that we want to be able to walk on. Um, for the walls on this side, there's nothing uh, stopping you from just filling in everything. Uh, so we can fill in these blocks, we can fill in these blocks so that there's no way to see any of the other stuff. And I'll build my wall. Um, on the left side, you're a little bit limited in that there are slime blocks and they will grab the blocks that you place, right? Um, I'm going to open it and then I'm just going to be able to see where the stuff is. So I can place blocks here, I can place one here, and I can place the blocks here if I want to. And I can also do them in the quarters technically. Uh, however, these three blocks, uh, you want to make sure that they're a non-stick block. If you place them while it's open, so it's on the, like, for the, the middle slime block here, it actually, there won't be any issues. Like, you could do this, and it will just take it with it. Uh, but this looks a little weird, and you don't really want that. But functionally, it's no different. Uh, but I would recommend, and this is usually what I do, is I use obsidian. Um, or in Java Edition, you can use furnaces or droppers or stuff like that. In Bedrock, obsidian is kind of your only option. Um, you can use obsidian here. You can also use glazed terracotta. I think that works in both Bedrock and Java Edition, because it's not getting pushed necessarily with a slime block. I think it's a... I think it's still a non a non stick block uh, if it's not getting directly pushed by it. Um, so this will let it close and it won't take any blocks with it. Um, I think I have a. I think I blocked something. My bad. What I do? Oh yeah, <laughs> I uh, broke that. And then we place the rest of them. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, this block actually has redstone on it. So if you replace that, you want to make sure you put it back. Okay, so yeah, this will let it close without having any issues. Um, and this is what I recommend, but you are welcome to do whatever you would like there. All right, guys, that'll be it for this video. Um, please let me know if you have any issues or if, there were, if I made a mistake or something like that. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you next time.